Well, it's time now for us to talk a little bit about this basketball game tonight between the Magic and the Chicago Bulls. Uh, tickets for this game would have been scarce Michael or no Michael. Uh, these two teams have played three terrific ball games already this season, and I'll guarantee you one thing, there's nothing the Magic would like better than to spoil Michael's night here in Chicago tonight. The Magic have seemed a bit confused lately. Coming into this week, they'd lost three straight and looked like anything but the beast of the East. Then came Tuesday night's showdown with Phoenix. Missing there, and it's a track beat now. And they have the slam by Penny Hardaway. These guys are back up to their old tricks again. With talent like this, Orlando can't stay down for long. Shaq's been playing like a maniac headed for NBA Player of the Month honors, and more importantly, he must be the favorite for NBA MVP. Nobody else can match his numbers in so many categories. The most powerful force in basketball, even with you-know-who back on the floor. Michael gets a good look at Penny Hardaway tonight. That alone would be worth a scalper's price. And Horace Grant comes face to face with Jordan for the first time as real life enemies. The subplots are endless. And this series has been terrific all year, even without Michael. January 10th at the United Center, Grant's well-hyped homecoming turned out to be a Chicago stampede. 109-77, Orlando's worst offensive number this year. Scotty Pippen's triple-double nailed it down for the Bulls. January 26th in Orlando, the rematch was a watered-down version with Pippen suspended and Grant injured. And still, the Bulls almost pulled this off losing 102.99. Then a month later, again in Orlando, this time Shaq had been suspended. But Penny Hardaway spoiled what should have been a Bulls victory. A steal and a dunk in the final second gave the Magic a 105-103 win. So three games, each with an unexpected result. Tonight, Chapter 4, with a new and unexpected addition to the mix. Unexpected is right. The NBA's team of the future against the ball club trying to recapture past glory. You know, Michael Jordan and Penny Hardaway were teammates in Scottie Pippen's charity game across the street back in September, but they have never played against each other in anger. Tonight they will, and earlier we talked to Penny about what he thought about Michael's comeback. I'm very happy because he, he makes me better. You know, just by watching his moves and, and the things that he does out there on the court offensively and defensively and um, when you play against the best then you can use him as a measuring stick to see how good you are so when I play against him I'm definitely going to give him my all and, and see what I can do against the best it should be terrific to watch tonight the Bulls and the Magic right now we'll step aside for a moment come back as Wayne Larrabee goes face to face with a man himself If it were somehow possible that any person in this city didn't know that Michael Jordan had returned to the Bulls, just take a look at the Prudential building downtown. It's all over the place. MJ back in a Bulls uniform and playing tonight. Well, why did he come back? That's a question that's been asked uh, a million times since his return to basketball, and it's one that Wayne Valerie put to uh, Michael Jordan in an exclusive interview that they held yesterday. Michael, almost two years ago, you left basketball. You wanted to get away from the media. They had no more challenges. Less than two years, you're back. Why now? Why jump back into a fishbowl that's even bigger than the one you left? <laughs> well, I mean, either way, my life has been uh, a fishbowl no matter what. You know, on the court, off the court, that's just something that I've kind of created for myself and certainly of my family. But I think being that I'm, I'm older, uh, I know how to deal with that, especially for my family's sake. You know, when I'm with my family, that's my private life. That's certainly, you know, my time with them. I think. Uh, one thing I, I kind of totally forgot, you know, once I retired 18 months ago was my love for the game of basketball. As much as I tried to stay away from the game, I mean, the more times that I played, the more times that my appetite got wet. So, uh, <clears throat> you know, once the baseball situation kind of diffused a little bit, I mean, it was good for me. I think it really gave me a chance to get my mind away from the game of basketball and more or less go back to the basics of, you know, participating, you know, from a, you know, from a, not from a, uh, a standard of, you know, high standards that I've set for myself, but down where I had to work to get what I, you know, I got. You're coming home tonight, uh, but this arena isn't really home. I mean, your home is across the street. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, the way that I see it is it's, it's the neighborhood. It's the same neighborhood, but it's a different house. And uh, it's a lot of resemblance to my new home or to the old home. Uh, but um, I guess you know, things have changed, and, and it's pretty modern, and certainly uh, you have to make it your home, and you have to bring some of the old pieces from the old place to here just to make it your new home. So um, I'd rather have the old stadium, but you know, in terms of modifications, I have to deal with this. And you know, for the time being, this is going to be my home until I get comfortable. So what's your future? How long are you here for? Well, I mean, I got to finish out my contract, and uh, you know, that's uh, a couple years, I think. And from that point on, I mean, I got to evaluate what what my uh, interests are at that particular time. And uh, I can't really, I don't want to look so far in the future that you know I'm pressed to live live out a certain schedule. My life has always been, and my motto has always been to live it day by day, you know, and not try to think so far in advance that you kind of forget about the present. You know, I want to live for the present at this particular time and the present is that I'm playing for the Bulls now and I look forward to finishing out my contract. Now what happens from that point on, you know, certainly is, is whatever I feel at that moment. They couldn't restructure your contract, Scotty Pippen's contract or anybody else's contract. Were there any stipulations uh, that Scotty and Phil Jackson and you would be together through the duration? It was a question, certainly. You know, I, I wanted to know what the status of these gentlemen were. I mean, I wasn't demanding not one thing. I've never demanded since I've been here. I wasn't going to start at that particular time. Even so, you know, I could have easily, but that, I've never operated from that angle, you know. And, uh, yeah, I asked about Phil. I asked about BJ. I asked about Pippen, Tony, you know, just to see where I stood, you know. And that had a lot to do with my decision-making. But, you know, I didn't demand these guys to get new contracts or, or you know, whatever, you know, uh, what all the speculations were. But, you know, in terms of myself, uh, I didn't ask for no extra money. I knew I couldn't because of the moratorium, and I came back under my old contract. This team, do you think you can win a fourth title as it's constituted? Certainly. I wouldn't be here if I didn't. Tonight is a night that a lot of people in Chicago have been waiting for for almost two years. What is your feeling going to be like as you wait to be introduced? The thing that I, I feel is, is the crowd and the inspiration that they they always have given me in the past and I don't anticipate being any different you know I mean that's the adrenaline that the home crowd presents to their home team uh, I'm a part of this home team now so I look forward to that adrenaline uh, going through me and certainly the inspiration to prove to the city of Chicago that you know, we're not ready to go to wait to next year attitudes we still have an opportunity to make make things happen now and uh, um, just don't give up on us. Just you know, support us as they always have, and uh, we will certainly try to do the best job that we can on the basketball court. And we'll hear more from Michael Jordan at halftime. Meantime, about T-minus five minutes and counting until Michael makes his first appearance on the United Center floor. Get those VCRs ready. We've got our cameras going, and we'll be back with all of it right after this. The United Center filling up quickly tonight, and the air of anticipation is just hanging in the building as we're about three or four minutes away from Michael Jordan's appearance on the floor. You see some of the Bulls coming out of the locker room, and if you've watched this team for very long at all, you know they have a special ritual they go through before every single game. It's one uh, that began with former Bull Cliff Levingston as they stretch out and get ready down there in the tunnel. But the Bulls will come together in a huddle. They'll all put a hand in, heads down low, and somebody will yell, what time is it? And you probably know the answer, game time. And for the first time, it'll be game time with Michael Jordan in uniform in the United Center. We've yet to see Michael's appearance. He hasn't come out of the locker room yet, but there's Ron Harper. You saw Corey Blunt and a pretty good assemblage of media down there to capture the moment. Tony Kukoc on his way out of the locker room, and certainly we expect to see Michael uh, coming out momentarily. And there he is, number 45, and being tracked down the hall by a number of camera people. We'll talk to Michael after the game, carry his press conference live, and ask him what he was feeling when he walked down that tunnel before this basketball game. Michael Jordan, the greatest basketball player in the history of the game, returning to the Chicago Bulls this week and playing his first home game tonight right here on WGN. 
Bulls getting ready to get into their huddle here. Oh, here you come now. And here we go, waiting for a couple of stragglers. It's all food and no out. What time is it? Jesus! back all right so let's burn the shack we'll see how that comes but uh, in the meantime you saw Michael Jordan take the floor with a big grin on his face back home again at last 21 months after his last professional basketball game the king is back in the building You'll see signs and placards and banners being held up all night long. Uh, many of those uh, commercial entities, a lot of companies are passing them out to the fans as they come in. Uh, many of the other ones, though, like the one you just saw there, homemade, number 45, Michael Jordan. Still sounds kind of strange when it rolls off your tongue, but I'll tell you, it won't be long until Michael and that number are old hat here in the United Center. Michael coming out. Even Horace had to glance to see what he looked like. And the best part is that Michael takes his practice layups. Every time he makes one, the, band go, the fans go crazy. It's like a rock concert here. Everyone trying to get close to the stage, taking pictures whenever Michael does anything, whenever he's in a clear view of them. And it's funny because as you watch the uh, magic here, they're trying to be unaffected, but uh, occasionally they will steal a glance. Got to be quite intimidating. This is a night that's going to make history. The fans here, I can't wait to talk with them. This is going to be fabulous. For once, we may see if the Bulls can turn this new building, the United Center, into some sort of home court advantage similar to the place across the street. We're going to hear a roar. We're definitely going to hear a roar. I think so. Let's hear from Dan Rohn now. All right, you guys, thank you very much. Yeah, that will be something to see. You know, I was here the night that the announcement, uh, not that the announcement had been made, but the night that the rumor had started to circulate around Chicago that Michael... Uh, may be on his way back to basketball. And I'll tell you what, there was a palpable electricity in the building even then, uh, that night and the next night when the Lakers played on a Saturday. Uh, you could tell the crowd was a little bit more jacked up than it had been during the course of the season up to that point. And now, of course, tonight, I don't see a fan in the house sitting down in his seat at this point. Everybody on their feet trying to catch a glimpse of this historic moment. Michael Jordan taking the floor at the United Center. Man, I'll tell you what, I've worked in this town for 11 years now, and I've seen uh, most of the great moments in the recent history of Chicago sports, the Bears, 
of the Cubs winning for the first time in 39 years, the White Sox claiming a division championship, and of course the Bulls having three. But I'll tell you one thing, this is one of those spine-chilling moments that you'll remember for a long, long time. here Michael Jordan of course on the court I tell you the excitement here is tremendous Dan uh, let's uh, get a shot of Michael as we get him from the uh, end zone view so to speak making the uh, free throws before the game a tremendous ovation we had a good chance had a camera down there of course in the microphone right in that Bulls huddle as you heard live here on WGN about the uh, pregame activities they go through the rah-rah spirit so we're going to go back to Dan Rowan upside on, uh, up on the perch right now but it's excitement galore down here at the uh, court side Dan all right, Rich, thanks very much. He's on the floor getting warmed up. We'll let uh, Michael take care of himself down there and let you get a break and come back with basketball here on WGN. Michael and the Bulls against Shaq and the Magic coming your way next. Thanks for watching, everybody. Enjoy the game.